I'm Jim Clark, Visual Arts Manager here at Hopkins Center for the Arts. We're speaking with Barbara Lidfors uh, about her exhibition, Metaphors of Trees, Woods, and Forests, on view in the lobby galleries now through October 22nd, 2022. Barbara, welcome. Thank you very much. Can you tell us a bit about where you find inspiration in a general sense, and then the specific inspiration for this body of work? Um, as a visual artist, my inspiration comes from what I see. And um, sometimes things that I see inspire me and kind of remain in my mind or make me feel a certain way or I think are fascinating. Um, I often then capture them with um, my camera and have photos that I can look at and um, mull over. But I need a visual inspiration that will last through the whole painting process, something that moves me enough or I, I feel personally attached to or there's some significance in it. Sure. So. When, when you say um, that you're gathering information from things that you see that spark yeah. some mm -hmm. interest, um, the paintings on display, uh, of which there are quite a number, you're on both floors of the lobby, um, some are pretty straight up landscape views, right. and others incorporate people in a way that mm -hmm. suggests uh, an ambiguous narrative. I can't imagine, though maybe possibly, you encountered a young woman on a chair in the woods. <laughs> no, that so, particular painting has its own story. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> with some of these, I imagine maybe you were walking in the woods, you discovered a scene that was inspiring, and mm -hmm. you captured it. And others, I imagine, uh, were set up as uh, you were directing a model right. and saying, this is what I'm looking for right. from right. you now. Yeah. Can you tell us about yeah. the, the difference there? And mm -hmm. is, it, am I, is that true? Is that how some of them came about? Yeah, that, that is true. First of all, I can say that the paintings in this exhibit were painted over maybe a nine year period. Um, and I tend to work in series. I tend to get one idea and follow it through and as many um, aspects as I can. Um, the ones in the exhibition that have people in nature were when I, a time where I was really thinking about how can nature be metaphors for things we do in life that interested me, the connection between um, why nature moves us, what does it have to say, how can we use it to, um, to say things. I was also living in Germany at that time. Um, there was a romantic period in the German um, European art scene where um, nature, um, like Caspar David Friedrich, um, did scenes where people were in the woods um, giving up a spiritual and metaphorical um, messages. So for instance, um, this painting, I really like the idea of it representing a woman's life in that moment where you suddenly come across um, obstacles and you obviously, looking at it as a viewer, you could see she just needs to go around them. But that's not what we do in life. We have this obstacle <laughs> and we don't have the perspective. And um, so it just kind of was working with that theme. There's other ones further down. There's a man on a um, large fallen tree. It's a huge tree. It was from a um, hike my husband and I took in Switzerland and um, in the mountains. So I had him just go on that tree and do what feels natural on that tree. And basically it got him up a little bit higher so he could kind of just view around and it clicked in my mind, yeah, that is kind of also something we do in life. We just, we assess things. We go where we can see a perspective. And um, I did probably a dozen of these type of things where people were either hiding because we hide in life. And I tried to visualize that with non-actors that I <laughs> found very cooperative. Um, there's one, like this girl in a chair, it was actually a scene from inside a house where she's kind of covering her face and you don't really know why, but I put her outside partly for the dis, 
connect that that brings. And it's kind of open-ended. You can imagine what you want to. But I like the idea. Uh, um, it, gets, it puts it in kind of a universal perspective because the woods is always the same. You know, a thousand years ago, it looked like it does now. So it kind of takes the, the currentness up uh, out and gives you kind of a universal thing. As I'm listening to you, it sounds like maybe, and, and maybe I breathe this into this myself, but did you composite two references together? Did you shoot the model in a chair in studio and then use that image in concert with an image that you took right. of, the, of the woods? Or did you set up a shoot with the chair and the model in the woods? Um, normally my... Um, Probably all the other ones, I asked whoever was with me outside, whether it was my son looking through a bush out to assess what was coming in front of him in kind of a field, kind of like in life, you kind of assess what's going to happen, you view something. Um, I would just spontaneously get an idea as I was outside. Um, but in that particular case, because that's a more recent one, and kind of a return to these other metaphorical paintings that I did probably um, seven, eight, nine years ago. Um, and, and those, with the young girl, she was sitting inside and, you know, the, I wanted to photograph her. After like five photographs, she went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the best photo. <laughs> But I, I did, you know, inside a house, it didn't have any, it, was, it would just be one moment that I wanted it to have more moments or more significant. So I thought, okay, I will put her outside and I have a trove of outdoor woodsy scenes. So it's kind of made up of like seven or eight things. I find that I am very, um, I engage really well with what I see and I'm more satisfied when I do use something vis visible or that I'm observing, if I start there, I usually um, generalize the stuff, but I, it, if I get lost, I can go back to kind of the, it helps me remind me of where my initial inspiration is. So um, my work tends to be based on what I've seen, often caught photographically. I don't like to use someone else's paintings. It feels like I'm painting their painting rather than mine. Um, and but I freely take a tree from here, a person from here, and compose, which is very fun. <laughs> Tell us more about your your process. Um, and and we you've given us some nuggets, but um, do you have a set process, or is it a little bit different for each painting? And do you? use preparatory drawings to develop ideas, or do the ideas come to you mentally mm. and then they just come out? What I think is really interesting is that um, you can kind of try to develop your own what you think would be a good process or what you've read that other people's processes are, but they don't work for you. <laughs> and at some point you realize, okay, this is the way I work. And it just works that way the best. So I, um, I usually have, used to have a camera now, my cell phone is handy. And so when something interests me, I'll just take a picture and I don't really think much beyond that, but then I have this trove of stuff. And I have some of, the, some of them I'll have printed out just so I can look at them often. Um, and gradually as I kind of review what I've been, um, drawn to, I, I can see a theme, and then I think, okay, this is good because I need to have, be sure that my interest in it is is more than just passing because doing a painting takes time, um, and doing a series of paintings, which I like to do, takes even longer. Um, and then I, as I have these photos um, in different filing systems, it looks chaotic from the outside, but I know what I'm doing with them. Um, one or the other will kind of grow and I realize, okay, this touches something that is significant for me and I try and figure out why that is and then highlight that. And often um, it's, it's, some, it's a feeling or a impression that's, that's there in life and those are, I like, so I cultivate them. 
Um, in this exhibition, there's three groups of paintings, the paintings that are metaphors with people out, out in the woods. There's a group of paintings, some of the larger landscape paintings, that are uh, impressions from a visit to Norway that I took. And early morning northern light sunlight ha um, produces the most unusual and unique colors for about 20 minutes in the morning if you're up early enough that makes the whole woods feel magical. There, it's like nothing we see in Minnesota it, or in Germany. It's something about the northern part of the way the light hits the world. So those, um, those paintings have to do with how kind of how the feeling it's like they're a metaphor too but more of of feelings like how do you feel today oh, i feel peaceful like i'm in the norwegian woods i'll show you what that is like mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like a feeling a representation of a, a feeling so that's the second part and then <clears throat> there's um, some more recent ones um, that i think is a really interesting topic um, they're paintings of clearings in the woods and after I painted one or two of those, I thought, why, does, why is this an interesting topic? But I began realizing a clearing is kind of a place where you know, you're walking and you need to get somewhere and you don't want to stop. But then you come to this clearing and it's like, I can stop here and I can just rest. There's a rock to sit on. It just feels good. And I thought, well, that's also the way life is. There's mm -hmm. these clearings you know, where you can just kind of take your coffee and <laughs> do a clearing in your favorite chair or something. But again, that's using nature to visualize kind of an experience, which I like. Are the clearings always, uh, do they always serve as periods of mental rest in your mind, whereas uh, the denser wood, wooded areas mm -hmm. in the paintings yeah. uh, typically uh, represent obstacles? Or are, do you ever feel like, amidst the woods, mm -hmm. the dense woods, that there are moments of clarity. Yeah, and I, I've done maybe like four clearing paintings, and I think it's yeah. the starting of a series. Okay, so <laughs> it's early that, on yeah, in this. Yeah, it's early on, and, mm -hmm. and early on uh, kind of discovering that as a, as a topic. And um, so we'll see how that develops. Maybe there are clearings in cities to urban clearings. I don't know, <laughs> just see. but. Um, the idea of something that you see representing how life feels is what kind of is at the heart of it. Your use of color. How much of the color in your paintings uh, are expressive personal choices mm -hmm. and how much are you driven to capture the, the local color as it was yeah. when it was observed? Um, I am a colorist. I love the way colors contrast with each other and give um, an additional layer of interest like or significance. So I, I hit somewhere in between. I'm, I like um, visually observing something and using those visual forms in my paintings and composing with the visual forms. But then I like um, highlight intensifying colors to make it make it do what it does when mm -hmm. color is um, kind of in, in harmony with each other or in discord or something. Um, also, in a sense, people, you know, I do fall in the realistic category of painting, but a real realist looking at my painting would say, she's not a realist because mm -hmm. I'm not. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Some in between something. It's using the, the forms of what we see to be more expressive. Uh, I think the the art term I've heard some painters use is pizzazz. Oh, I'll try that <laughs> one. what can I do to bring pizzazz into this country? Yes. Um, <laughs> as uh, standing here now, um, mm -hmm. where there are paintings with uh, figures in them, people interacting with the woods, and then there are uh, images that are uh, unpeopled. Right. Um, but to me, it seems as though, like, from here, looking at obstacles with this woman encountering this, uh, these things to overcome, and then we go to this one next to us, um, yes. and spinning thoughts. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and the viewer 
becomes the figure in that one right. in that we are looking through these yeah. obstacles. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that an intentional move yeah. or happy accident? Intentional move. Um, right, and I'd say there's, um, there's a handful of paintings that fall into this category, whatever you'd want to name it. It's kind of, I don't know if it's anthropomorphic. I'm, I'm these, this tree with the swirling branches first caught my attention because I just thought it was so interesting. They make such nice negative spaces in between and all. And then I thought, why, am I, why does this interest me? And I realized, yeah, that's the way a creative person thinks. Your thoughts spin on top of each other and then you connect different things. And I realized that's what <laughs> interests me about it. Because mm -hmm. I know that kind of connect one branch to another and you come up with a new idea. Sure. Um, so that's what's behind this, this um, spinning thoughts and spinning branches um, painting. Um, there's another one where you see two trees in a woods where the branches or the roots of both of them are exposed as they go down a hill. And um, I was drawn to it just because it was an interesting um, tree, root, hill kind of um, connection. And then as I was painting, I realized, you know, it's a little bit like two people that have been together a really long time mm -hmm. <laughs> and the roots kind of grow. And and then I thought, I, I wonder if that's why, why I like it. You know, sure. I, why am I attracted to some things and why not? And I find it really interesting that you can be drawn to something and not really know why, and it kind of unfolds itself layer after layer. There's um, two paintings, or at least one of them, that is here. Also, um, with a tree, you just see that part of the tree where a, a section of branches come out and it's kind of at the end of the day, so it's kind of quiet. One of the branches is chopped off. Some of the branches are big and small. And it's a tree out my window. Mm -hmm. um, so I see it all the time. I recognize it right away. And it has drawn me somehow, just that one section, how the branches are different in that one section. And then as I was painting it, I realized, you know, it's like a person's life some branches get cut off and some grow strong and some grow little and taken in that way i thought it was really interesting <laughs> and so yeah how invested are you in um the the viewer off the street the objective viewer mm -hmm. that wasn't there with you while you were yeah. painting and maybe doesn't hear this talk and and get additional context how important is it to you that that objective viewer gets a sense of that. Um, you do remember that I wanted to put an explanation by every single painting. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Which doesn't need to be. So um, we do have a little tiny, uh, very hard to find um, text where I just indicated some of the themes that I have here. But I'm fine, you know, you have to be fine with people looking at mm -hmm. it, the paintings and some people enjoy working their way into possibilities. Others like the colors and, you know, it's all fine. It's mm -hmm. good. <laughs> but if someone asks me, I will tell them. <laughs> <laughs> but then maybe, the, you know, it's also interesting and they'll tell me what they see in it, mm -hmm. which is also often a real new and great perspective that helps me. <laughs> sure. Are you exclusively an oil painter or do you work in other mediums as well? Um, there's nothing quite like oil. I mean, um, I often will start a painting or um, put the shapes and under painting composition um, on with acrylic because it just dries fast. But I like, I like having the time to work with oil before it dries and it's just beautiful to work with. Mm -hmm. So um, I do do drawing some but I find that it's not real helpful for me to do drawings of what I'm going to paint um, because then I've worked, worked it out and I lose, and then when I want to start the painting, it feels like I put too much energy in something. I need the energy into the actual painting. So you just kind of go with how you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't do it as methodically as some people do. Sure. How do you describe yourself as an artist to other people? Um, yes, that is always hard. One of my um, uh, favorite quotes, or one quote I can just bring in here, somewhere 
Picasso said in some certainly beautiful French, but in English it says, painting is just another word for keeping a diary. And that, that's kind of a little bit what it is for me too. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I, don't, I, I paint things that are part, that are meaningful to me as my life goes on. That means that a lot of family members come into my paintings because of the people I know the best I have. Um, what I assume are universal experiences with people in close relationships um, and places that I've been. We lived in Germany for many, a long time. And so, and visited other cultures. So that experience of being in other cultures is really interesting to me. That comes in my paintings. So, um, the at heart, I'm painting my diary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm painting, and I I assume, and it's true from literature, which is also something I studied in college. There are just a certain number of basic topics in life, and we all experience them in one way or another. And so everybody's contribution to it is valid and, and important. Um, I've also thematically probably drawn to um, painting other people's life experiences too. I did figurative um, paintings for quite a long time before I got into nature. Um, and you see some of my people here in nature. Um, but it interests me to take try and tell the stories of um, people in their homes or out in the streets and how, how we relate to each other and stuff, kind of it's fun. <laughs> you reference uh, your time living in Germany, uh, which mm -hmm. was 38 years? It was 38 yeah. years, yeah. And you moved back right, right before COVID, COVID yeah. right. Um, <laughs> Who would have known? <laughs> and, do you, like, looking at these paintings, um, and, and the figures are typically, if not exclusively, alone in the woods, mm -hmm. and so I can't help, and maybe it's just me projecting, but there's a sense of that isolation um, and, and um, disconnect um, with things around us. Do you feel like, a good part of the paintings are about that transition, both moving mm -hmm. uh, a, a great distance and then at a time where, and I don't want to speak for you, but I imagine it was quite difficult to reconnect or make new connections because of the world events. Yeah, that was quite a time. Um, what I did in the 20 years or so that I was active in the art community in around Nuremberg, where we used to live, um, I was painting primarily figures at that time, and I began to realize how um, whatever situation we're in, whether it's in the street, in public places, you act a certain way and it have a certain sense. When you're living in your own home, people create spaces, which I think is really, really interesting. Um, you have a different feeling when you're out in nature. So I, um, I would exhibit paintings over there that were kind of one of those th three categories. And I have a big series of um, people in public spaces where you can see these individuals kind of coming and passing each other. And in one moment, <laughs> they're going different directions, but in one moment they have something to do with each other mm -hmm. and create interesting colors and shapes and stuff. Um, I mean, I am by nature more introverted than extroverted, though I enjoy um, people and being with people. But to regenerate, I need um, creative alone time. Sure. Um, so I, I think um, a lot of it is, is partly just how my experience of um, how it feels for an individual. Um, I, I really enjoyed basically the time we were in Germany and where, where I had a fairly wide group of contacts and were really, was really happy about how international people, which would have included me over there, were um, included in the cultural area of the country. It was one area where you could easily be active and accepted and participating. Um, as a foreigner over there. It was really interesting. 
I had one exhibit at a um, gallery and asked the director to give the talk beforehand, which is often what they do over there. <laughs> he was trying to figure out why I painted the way I did. And so he looked at Minnesota in, because um, he knew that's where I came from, in Google to try and find what is the culture there? Why does she paint so warmly, he thought, towards about people and so unhierarchically uh, without class distinctions and where is her sarcasm and where is all this stuff that is part of the European mm -hmm. <laughs> um, culture often. And it was just interesting because I lived there for a long time but apparently I had brought certain things from Minnesota over there and mm -hmm. people would notice. So anyway, it, so I was, um, you know, I, I wasn't, I had one foot in both cultures, I guess, even when I was there. But it was good, it was good use. Barbara, what do you find is the most challenging <clears throat> aspect of working as an artist? Um, I personally find that the most challenging um, aspect is really finding my own way forward rather than um, being influenced in a wrong way, in, a, in not a healthy way by other trends or other artists. Mm -hmm. Because as an artist, you know, I see all these things and work of other people and I think, oh, I'd like to paint like that and I'd like to do this and I'd like to do that. But over years you learn, <laughs> just enjoy what other people do. You, gotta have, you, gotta, you can only do what you can do. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the long-term goal is to, like Picasso said, paint your life and paint how, you, how it comes out of your, um, out of, off your brush. And it took a while for me to catch that. And when I did, it, it settled a lot of things in me. Um, just accepting that I have, um, I mean, everyone has a story and no one's going to tell my story except me. Mm -hmm. And um, so that isn't often talked about, but I think it is my personal challenge. Um, yeah. Can you pinpoint the moment at which you recognized that, that, that it was important to you to mm -hmm. paint yourself authentically versus right. do right. things that you found uh, attractive in other people's work? Right. Um, I, when I was in college, I studied literature because <laughs> I loved to read and I liked lit novels and poetry. And I thought, oh, it'd be fun to be a writer. But I had to realize, no, I'm not a writer. I am an artist, so I better do what, um, do my art. So I had always taken art classes. I was heading towards um, getting enough classes at the University of Minnesota that I could apply for a uh, master's degree. And then we went to Germany, where the, the um, educational systems don't really connect. So the only way I was going to be able to, to get an MFA, a Master in Fine Arts, which I felt at some point I needed because I technically had gotten to a, um, a fine level, but I didn't know what I was doing. So I ended up getting an MFA from a college in um, a low residency program in Vermont, where I'd go at the beginning of every, of every semester, and then worked. They would contract with an artist teacher where I was living in Germany. So I worked with different professors at the Nuremberg Art Academy, but through this American thing. That's kind of long. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, the focus of that um, program was just what I would need would needed because they wanted to help everyone or provoke everyone to um, make art around their our own things our own voice our own experience what we ourselves were passionate about um, not just be artists that just copied other people and I thought oh this is this is what I really need mm -hmm. so we'd bring our work back and they'd say what are you trying to say here and I'd say well like this and they would say well if you're trying to say that why are you painting like this you're not saying that through what you're painting so the focus was on knowing what you were wanting to say and how that how that came out of your life and so it was two years of being provoked to <laughs> paint authentically basically and it was it was that was what I needed through the um, master's program and I came back and started painting and 
I was able to get in every show that I um, applied to. Like I, I had a fresh, I had my own voice that wasn't part of, oh yeah, another one of these or something. And so it, it made a big difference. And I'm grateful for that because it has given, I don't think you can long paint something that is not really your vein. You can just kind of have a good time with it. It's nothing wrong with it. But um, at some point, you know, by trial and error, you figure out this is where the creative um, juices flow, unendless, because it's coming from you and from how you are responding to your life. And it's where you can go long term. So, and for good or for bad, I'm less, less um, it doesn't really matter as much to me if I'm <laughs> well, you know, famous or non famous or whatever. I'm measuring it by if I'm really producing things that are saying what is real to me. So. Marvelous. Let's open it up to questions. Okay. Barbara, yes. what I'd like to, what I really enjoy about your paintings is that you have people, something alive in it beside mm -hmm. the scenery. And, um, you know, I like to do scenes, but I always like to put something that's alive in it. So, yeah. you know, you can, the viewer can look and be in contact with something alive beside right. the other, the scenery mm -hmm. that you paint. Yeah. Yeah, I think it brings a, uh, another level of meaning um, and interest into painting, too. I enjoy working that way. Barbara, in uh, this picture in front of us, what are the what is that obstacle? Is it uh, pine boughs or? Um, no, they're actually stones. And um, in my original walk through that woods, we found ourselves going around different stones, um, and so I just heaped them up. The green is kind of a, a yellow green moss that grows in the um, verdant forests in Germany because they're thick canopy forests and um, moisture stays down and so there's a lot of moss in the spring and um, so I just painted the whole thing. <laughs> and the woman, uh, she's experiencing some kind of flight into, and it has to, to escape, she has to go over the obstacles? Well, that could be. And I think that's one um, that could be. It could be various things. I've heard different people interpret it, what they might, might think it is. So, and what about you? What did you think when you were doing it? I, um, I thought different things as I was painting it. So, um, and, that's, and that's why I like this, that it kind of can refer to different things. Or you can put your own idea into, or maybe what you would feel if you were this person and stumbled up against something. Um, so it can be, you know, you could write many books about <laughs> what I could, many stories. <laughs> but then wow. that's good. That means it hits something. And life is kind of made up of real common experiences. Periodically, there's some big traumatic thing. But a lot of life is seeking, finding, making things, order, ordering things, putting things in place, um, solving problems. And I kind of like the idea of finding um, metaphors for those everyday things. So, it, you know, they're no big deal, but that's what our life is made up of. So, <laughs> they're fair game for artists. <laughs> so, how many paintings do you have in your closet that you've put away because mm -hmm. you're stalled out? And then you go back and you oh, go, yeah. well, wait, maybe I, after doing some of these, then you could go, well, I could do. I found something yeah. that wasn't there before. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 That, I think, is a common experience for artists. And actually, um, I took all my really favorite paintings and hung them, of course, which means also I took some off the wall of my living room, which I really enjoy and had to pull out exactly those paintings that aren't finished <laughs> to put in those spaces. So I have these unfinished paintings right now looking at me. And um, one of them, um, I finished. I figured out what the problem was. And two days ago, in like an hour, I 
fix the composition, and now it's, it's a great painting. So, um, I mean, this is something I think an artist learns too. You do get to a point where you don't know where to go. It, it isn't right, but you don't know. So um, the time of just putting it aside is really helpful. Because if you, if you continue, you're going to really mess it up. So, yeah, time is a good is side. <laughs> well, you may have covered this. Um, how do you set the scene for your work? Where does it come from? It's like, is it like uh, setting up a, a, a piece of literature? Is it like what's coming through when you walk through the woods? Mm -hmm. Is it from your dreams? Where does it all come from? Yes. yes. All of it. <laughs> all those places. All those places, yeah. I like to see something visually. I like to have a visual observation of something that starts it. That's just the way I'm made. Um, I don't think I've ever use a dream for a painting. Um, I know there's artists who do, who do amazing things, but that doesn't, I can maybe talk about it verbally, but not, I don't have the image. Um, and there's others that just out of their minds make up amazing stories or amazing paintings, and I um, am totally in awe of that for other people, but whatever I just kind of make up out of my mind is so boring that I just think, forget it. So I, I think it's just, we're different, you know, and you got to know who, how you work, and then just work with how you, how you are. Unfortunately, we don't get any instructions with our own inner <laughs> life. We have to figure it out. I really like the painting that's three down yes. uh, with the peach background. Yeah. Is that another one that you viewed as a challenge in life with this man either trying to straighten the tree or the tree is yeah. threatening to collapse or on that. him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, can we really, act, can one man actually or one person straighten a tree? No. So it's kind of like a symbol of how many things do we do that <laughs> really are never going to get, you know, out of our um, capabilities, or how often do we push against something that isn't Sisyphus. Gonna, yeah, kind of <laughs> like that, right, yeah. right. And so that topic brought down to just kind of a mundane situation was what was that painting was about. The color is wonderful in it, though. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Well, nature, nature is such a wonderful place for introspective thought, and I love mm -hmm. your using trees and woods and forests as a metaphor. And to me, all of these, there's a draw to every one of these, Super. and there is like a peacefulness even in the obstacles. I just, it's, they're very pleasant Great. to look at. Thank you, thank you. Barbara, thank yeah. you so much for sharing your work with our community. You're welcome. I'm Jim Clark, Visual Arts Manager here at Hopkins Center for the Arts. We've been speaking with Barbara Lidfors about her exhibition, Metaphors of Trees, Woods, and Forests, on view now through October 22nd of 2022.